The UFL Gambling Podcast Week 1 Reaction Show on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's US-based and available in 40 different states. Head to cut.com, that's KUTT.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their uh, their pick 'em for a chance to win a hundred times the amount of money you can enter in NBA, MLB, NHL, college hoops, and much, much more. Sign up today using the promo code TCESGPN to get a hundred percent deposit match. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Yes, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use that promo code SGPN to get fifty percent off your first month and start making smarter bets today, people. And remember as always folks to let it ride. This is Brian Bosworth, AKA the boss. And you're listening to S G P N let it ride brother. Peace out. Boz out. Welcome to the UFL Gambling Podcast. I know it said XFL. We're working on music. It is now the UFL. We got a week in the books, and I'm excited to talk shit. I'm excited to, you know, I I don't know if you guys know this, but, uh, and I'm not asking my uh, co host here, but you can watch the show live on YouTube, youtube.com slash the UFL. Um, you, yeah, I mean, I went undefeated on my pick, so it, it, I got a lot of BDE Ric Flair energy. If you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, my name is Colby Swiggin' Database Dad, a.k.a. Pick Don D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Don D happened, he was a superstar. Nobody knows nothing. Somebody knows. Double the price. But no one touches Dundee. Week one in the books, we had centers catching 40 yard touchdowns. We had kickers that had never kicked since high school, making big time kicks twice in a row. And just good play. Fun league. Except for that bullshit in the dome. I'm joking. It was just a good game. Sort of. Sort of joking. Um, We're going to go game by game, recapping it all. I am joined by, uh, and and folks, give us a follow on Twitter at UFL Gambling Pod. But I am joined by the host of the Bottom Line Bombs podcast, some know him as the man in the box, a.k.a. the bet detective. Give it up for CJ Sullivan. How you doing? Great, great first weekend of games. We all did well with our picks. I, uh, I don't want to brag about the. Of course, it it helped my um, prediction of DC. Not DC's demise. But I said they're going to have a slow start. DC. We did predict the outright loss, but that fake punt, which was the play of the weekend, touchdown to the center. The bet detective was on. The bet detective sniffs out a little bit. First of all, how is he eligible? It's second uh, no, no, he, he's eligible because he wasn't actually the center on that. No, I know they put him out on the guard. Yeah. I, I saw that too, but I, some still says fishy. And then it looks like he could easily been tackled at the five. And I think the defender let him score because you had to complete the play. I and will the- say that I think he actually got tackled at the one. They didn't give us a replay. Yeah. They were like, let's get this to halftime. This has to be a touchdown. We can't have this be all for nothing. It was a bit fishy, but it was great. We, we have to we have to celebrate with Wade and his yellow shirt. Oh, Gramps, we, 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 dre- we dressed Gramps up, and his, his, the yellow shirt. He looked like a number one, like uh, world's greatest grandpa shirt out there. Well, was- well, yeah, I don't get. <laughs> Dave, break, man. Uh, we are also joined by third man in the booth. The host of the old fashioned football podcast, which you should be subscribed to as well. Uh, give it up for Justin Mark, aka J Mark. How you doing, brother? Doing good. Uh, glad football is back. And um, I think what CJ really meant is we all saw that Jordan Tamu is exactly who I said he was, uh, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. He did not look good. He looked exactly like he did in the championship game last year. Well, well, they were messing with them. I bring Storm in mid series, and I bring him in there. And Tommy threw a pick out of spite. Fine, you're gonna put me back in. Here's a pick immediately. 
uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll talk, we'll talk about that because I don't know that it's all on him. Um, but, uh, but yeah, well, yeah, I know you hate him. I know you secretly hate him. It's okay. Um, but both, both your guys lost. I think the, you know, the thing that jumps out to me, I mean, I hate, I hate to just go right into this besides going four and oh, you know, I feel like I got in a lot of arguments over the off season. Mm-hmm. Even throughout the the season last year, when I said, I get it. The XFL is more exciting for a fan standpoint. They have fans there. It's more exciting. But I thought from watching every game that I thought they were more gimmicky. They didn't have, when I watched the USFL, I thought they were a better style of like better football teams. I thought they were better football teams. And I think so far now, and they didn't even take the best teams in the USFL, like Philadelphia and New Jersey are better than Michigan and All Memphis. Right, get your point, Dundee. We get it. They're not, they're not bringing in the bad. They're bringing in the bad yeah. teams. We're going over that. No, but this is look. If you look, there's a lot of of of, of the same players now. Birmingham even took yeah. hits. Alex Magoe's gone. Scarborough's gone. Their top two wideouts are in the NFL. Mm-hmm. They, Thaddeus Moss is gone. You know they 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 took some hits, right? right. They fucking dominated, and, and both USF. So we had only two yeah. USFL games against uh, XFL teams, and I. I can't help and I shout out to Scooby Wright, aka Shark Dog, friend of the program. I know he he uh he tweeted Pat McAfee because McAfee had the rock on. He was saying, you know, that the quality of play is better in the XFL, which I just think he was doing it to cater to the rock. Um yeah, of course. I, I mean, dude, the, the, like the numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. And the two games where we had them, the, the 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 thing that jumped out to me was the line of scrimmage. The line of scrimmage, they destroyed them. Both teams averaged five point one yards a rush. Mm-hmm. Michigan 5.1 yards of rush against St. Louis. And I know that they needed a 64 yarder to win that game, but really Michigan was the better team all day. So I don't want to hear like uh, if, if some people say, well, they needed a 64 yarder. Well, okay. St. Louis also needed a fourth and 10 conversion. Um, uh, and then Birmingham also 5.1 yards per carry, but the, the, the other side of that coin, St. Louis only rushed for 62 yards. Arlington only rushed for, for 59 yards. This is what I'm talking about. And this is why, like, as much as you want to say that, like, I get it. Passing the football has evolved, uh, uh, but you still look at it. Uh, I want to say it was 12 of the 14 teams that made the NFL playoffs. All but one were in the top half, uh, the top 17 in yeah. rushing yards. We see it with Michigan. We see it with Georgia and college football. The teams that run better will win the fucking game for the most part. And I thought it was domination on both games. Like I, I know the Michigan game was close because they fucked up. But from the, when, if you just watched the line of scrimmage, I thought it was evident one team was getting their ass whooped. J Mark, your thoughts? Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Um, I think we we were both kind of on this. The fact that the U.S. fell ran the ball better. It's nice to see it play out in an actual game, in my opinion, because it was it was something that it seemed like it as we we're watching. It's like they're so much more efficient on the ground than you get in an actual game. And there's a night and day difference there. And I, I don't know what leads to that. I mean, you would they're they're pulling from the same pool. So your lines should be the same. Your running back should be the same, you know, but uh, US folk can run the ball a lot better. I, I thought they just don't like, especially the Birmingham game. I mean, you look at the yardage in that game just in general, uh, mm-hmm. but a, they had 183 yards on the ground at 5.1 yards of carry. That's some Ron Dane, Wisconsin Badger shit from like, you know, you're getting 5.1 yards of carry and you're and you're running for that many yards uh, dominating performance there. And, and once again, that was like with, they did. I know that they returned a lot of their offensive line, CJ Marables back, Ricky person, juniors back. But they are breaking in brand new wideouts, with the exception of Kane. Okay, Sternberger's back, but there are some 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 guys that are new, and for them to just pick up uh, p- pick up where they left off, I think is is a testament to Skip Holtz and, and the Stallions. They look dominant. They look far better than anyone in this fucking league. To tell you the truth, like uh, CJ, your thoughts on that game specifically on Birmingham? Yeah. Yeah, like we said, well, besides Luis Perez looking good early on, uh, they but the, you're right, they are too much. They're the cream of the crop, and uh, it, and you're right, and you're right about your overall points about the U- the USFL teams. Um, 
having a superior offensive line and just established that that's the way they built their teams. I think that's, they did that intentionally. Well, and, I just, I just feel like in general, like the, when I watched the, and I, I wanted the XFL to succeed last year. I didn't, I don't have, I wanted any, any of these spring leagues to succeed. I just thought it was gimmicky. It was yeah. like, it was a lot more gimmicky. And when you watch the USFL, it's like, man, I think they're going to fuck them up if they were to ever play. Now I didn't know they were going to merge, but I just thought Birmingham was way right. better. I took Michigan money line uh, because I thought their physicality could be an issue, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Michigan was getting after it at St. Louis. What they almost went scoreless in the first half. They got what three points I think on the on, at the very end of the second quarter. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess let's go game by game on this. Let's yeah. start I, off. And I will say in 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 the defense, Birmingham is better than everyone in the USFL too. I mean, they're better than everybody. True. True. But I would argue. That, I mean, me and me and J Mark were talking a little bit before he jumped on, and like the generals. Who yeah. aren't even a team anymore? I, I, mean, I thought yeah, they had I, the best offensive line in the UFL or the USFL last year. That's They're it. not even a team. They're yeah, not even a team anymore. It, what? Well, I was just gonna say they took the wrong XFL teams too. I mean, it's, I don't, I don't. I mean, we don't know what the books are and financials. Why? What team? Why? Why? Yeah, certain Seattle teams, should have been in. Yeah. yeah Seattle should have been in. I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. But like. It is what it is. Um, yeah, certainly not these San Antonio's and Houston teams. And hell, I would have thought that we, we were even like the Orlando for crying. Well, out. Houston was a USFL team. That was a USFL right. team. Right. Yeah. And they, 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 yeah, to me, they took the worst one, but let's, let's just go one by one here. Stallions 27, Renegades 14. The Renegades got out to an early lead, uh, but Matt Corral and even Adrian Martinez was able to run the ball pretty successfully. Three rushes, 52 yards. You know, that's the one thing that, jumped out without, I know Bo Scarborough didn't play much last year. The year before was when he was super dominant, but uh, as the game went on, Marable and person junior became more of a factor early on. They were doing a decent job bottling up those guys. Um, maybe, you know, it, maybe it has something to do with some of the new personnel. I'm not sure, but it, it seemed like by the third quarter, they were getting, you know, substantial plays left and right with, for positive yards. Uh, especially like even, even in the short passing game and Matt Corral is going to be a stud in this league. Like, come on, right before the half that, that throw, um, that changed it, the game. That did change the game. I mean, he's, he's, he's a very good quarterback for, for these, like with skip Holtz, skip Holtz is very good at keeping it very vanilla. I've mentioned this a few times on the show, but I, I really think like Corral and Holtz is going to work out. I think they might even, he might even be better than Mago because, because of how simple he'll keep it. And just his raw talents, his raw talents is probably more athletic than Mago. Mago is actually pretty athletic, but I don't know. I just feel like the watch out because if we thought last year's team was good, which uh, I think this team has the potential to be even better, even though I think they're a little worse at wide out. I think they're a little worse at wide out than a year ago. They lost both. They lost both their wide outs a year ago to, to the NFL, um, Austin Watkins, who's on the Eagles and Davion Davis, who's on the Redskins. So, you know, that I think is something to monitor throughout the season, but the defense Scooby, Wright Was out there making plays defensive line. Look good. Secondary looked pretty good. Um, I just thought they were the much better team uh, just watching the game early on. They were able to get them. I think they had a busted coverage on the Perez deep ball, but uh, bes besides that, I think it was pretty, pretty evident that they were just much better. Your yeah, thoughts but, on, on I, the game, I, CJ? Well, I was just going to say, well, first of all, let's, let's not, let's not slander Perez here. And that's J Mark's job anyway, <laughs> uh, busted coverage and busted coverage. As we said last year, all next, that's part of, that's part of, it's just be part of this league. I mean, busted coverage is part of <laughs> territory. just like red zone turnovers. You get mad at that. No, that's going to come with the territory. You got to know that coming in, you know, you're going to get that. So you can't really, I mean, not that you have to handicap it in, but you, you can't expect, you can't create your own narrative of what you think is going to happen, especially in this league, because you know, it's going to be sloppy. And it was the first game of the season, but yeah, for clear, it was domination. That, and it took a little while for Corral to get going. And once he, but once he did start clicking, um, you could tell, you can see the talent that's there and uh, they're going to be more dangerous. I think it could, it could be even an upgrade at quarterback for them. Yeah. Well, and, and to me, the, the another thing is the over should have hit you filthy, you filthy ah, piece of shit. Yeah, I mean, what three, three, it, I think two were technically in the red zone, but the third one was right on the cusp of the red zone turnovers. Yeah. And then you had the missed field goal by blow it. I took the over in this game thinking it would hit. I did lose on that, but uh, I think he has to change his name. <laughs> you know, I mean, this that is announcer was okay. waiting. 
to yeah. say Chris blew it, blew it. Yeah. I mean, it's already manifested. Waiting. Yeah, the announcers are just waiting to say it. Chris blew it, blew it. Ah! <laughs> you know, that, that hurts some on the over. Okay, we got it. Um, <laughs> but dude, if you look into to the yardage on this, I mean, Birmingham had 409 yards of offense, 6.4 yards per play. Mm. Um. Arlington put up 262, and I feel like a lot of that was in the first half. John Chavez did a great job in the second half with adjustments. Um, J Mark, what'd you make of this game? Yeah, I'll throw some Luis Perez slander in there. Um, YouTube didn't teach him how to play very well when he was getting pressured a lot. No. And that's where his game falls <laughs> short, in my opinion. That's one of the reasons I'm always after Luis Perez. When he you start putting pressure on him consistently, he does not look like a very good quarterback. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, we, we all kind of expected the stallions here to dominate, uh, CJ and I right on the under there. Sorry, Colby. Um, mm. <laughs> about the only thing you missed this weekend though, but, uh, also a big shout out to CJ's, uh, Dion Kane call in his DFS. That guy picked up right where he left off last year. Big and it's, yep. Yeah. Yeah. The entire, yeah. since you since you brought it up, I wasn't going to bring it up until I was my next turn to talk, probably. But uh, since <laughs> you did, <laughs> uh, I I put in a, I put in a lineup that I and the, the same lineup I gave out to everyone here, but I, and I didn't change one thing. Same exact lineup I gave out came in sixth place of a of, out of seven hundred and eighty or something like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was only a five dollar contest, and I'm tilted more that I didn't win any money. I won like eighty bucks, but I'm like, oh god, if that was your normal hundred dollar tournament, I could almost get you know four figures, whatever. Uh, yeah. But it still feels good. It's six six out of seven hundred fifty nine. It's a good way to start the season. So follow along for our DFS plays. We all did well with the DFS and so. Oh man, I th I think I would have placed in some solid money had one player not just completely shit a bed or shit the bed, which I'll talk about in a minute here. But uh, folks, I want to tell you that right now you are listening to uh, Sports Gambling Podcast Network, and uh, of course, you know the this is the UFL Gambling Podcast, all the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. SGPN is home to twenty plus gambling podcasts, all are completely free. This week's featured show is the MLB Gambling Podcast. Baseball is back, and so is the MLB Crew with their daily free uh, free picks podcast. If you aren't subscribed to the MLB Gambling Podcast, what are you waiting for, folks? Play ball and get on over there and subscribe to the MLB gambling podcast. All right. We are back talking UFL. I got to hop down to the next game because I feel like this is where I really look like a fucking genius. And I, I just want to talk shit to J Mark here. Cause I told him this pussy ball with, with Tony meatball ain't going to work. <laughs> Michigan's defense is fucking grimy. I like it. Um, and uh, you, you, one could wonder if EJ Perry just doesn't throw a couple picks. If they, if they don't throw a forward pass, I think they they probably win twenty one to seven or twenty one to three or something. If they just stuck to the basics. Um, but this game was uh, was I, obviously it was a, I think some people would say their their favorite game of the weekend based on the endings. You know, a lot of drama down the stretch as the Battle Hawks battled back, took a lead, then got the two point or the the one point conversion to grab the lead. Um, but the, the Panthers then returned to kick and basically made a 60, a, a kicker who hadn't made a kick since high school made a 64 yarder. He they made called, two of them. I mean, yeah, they, they unbelievable. They, they froze him and he made it. Then like they didn't drill it again. Like, oh, he's not gonna do that again. He drilled it even better. Dead straight. 64 yards could have been good from 70. Like, oh, I hasn't, hasn't attempted one since high school. Hasn't attempted one since high school. What the <laughs> hell has this guy been doing with his life? Is he Roy Hobbs? Has he been yeah. <laughs> not in his stomach and he's been missing for 15 years? What do you mean he hasn't attempted in high school? Then Jay Mark told me he played soccer. What kind of what kind of American is he for crying? Well, out? I'll tell you this. You know, a lot of times they they say, Oh, the I heard uh why is this guy in the league? I heard I heard Jay Feely talk about this with kicking so much better these days. Well, it's easy when you're in a dome. It's a lot easier when you're in a dome. But still, 64 yards is 64 yards. Holy sure shit. Is. To win the um, game, like with in pressure yeah. situation, you know, it wasn't just that. There was kicks all around the league, though, too. The other guy hit like fucking drilled like a 70. Yeah, DC's kicker was on yeah. point. Yeah. Um uh now this one pretty hilarious too, because you know, Michigan. I know we shit on their offense, but they got six yards per play on offense. They just shit the bed a lot mm -hmm. uh, with, with their turnovers. Uh, St. Louis, 4.4 yards per play on offense. Uh, Michigan outgained them by only 19 yards. But to me, the real deciding factor here 
is St. Louis couldn't run for shit. 20 rushing attempts for 62 yards. You look at Michigan. They had 22 rushing attempts for 112 yards, 5.1 yards of rush. As I alluded to earlier, they were the more physical football team. And that's why they, they like, I couldn't believe they almost lost this game because I think if, if you just watched the line of scrimmage, I know I was texting you guys. I was like, Oh, Michigan's fucking them up on the line of scrimmage. Like they're fucking them up on line. McCarron's has got talent. McCarron had a deep ball that should have been six. Yeah. Should have been six early in that game that he missed. But besides that play, I would say Michigan's defense, Nakua, as, as I know, uh, you know, J Mark had, had Texas say, man, he's, he's a dog. Michigan got after it. And I think that they're, uh, you know, and what's crazy is they did this without, you know, remember Corbin was a good running back for them last year. They, they didn't even have Corbin on the, on this year's, you know, roster. He retired. Um, hey, Panthers one and oh, Mike Nolan. Uh, J Mark, your thoughts? Well, I think, I, I don't know if they can sustain that success. I do think their defense super impressive. Their run game, super impressive. I thought EJ Perry sucked. Um, he, he's looked like a, a backyard ball kind of guy, right? Yeah. Staring down your receivers. His only good times was when he was running around like a chicken with his head cut off. But, uh, I mean, more disappointing was just how the battle Hawks showed out. I mean, they should have, they should have had the better receiving crew and they moved the ball in the air. All right. But in just that run game, it was terrible. I mean, you got Wayne train Gallman who, uh, an NFL talent mm-hmm. who just, I mean, he couldn't couldn't get anything going. So maybe they need to look for some fresher legs in him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tony meatball too. I thought a couple times, maybe should have went for it a couple times. You know, there's some questionable in game management there. The play Uh, calling in the red zone was terrible. Yeah. Terrible. You can't run the ball on him. So on third and fourth down, let's run the ball. What what are you doing? (laughs) CJ, what'd you make of this one? There was a couple and you're right. And I do think Michigan did deserve to win. I like that they their def and her defense was impressive and I knew they were a good defense. I didn't and uh Perry was bad, although he gave me 20 fancy points. He was my fancy starting quarter. <laughs> <laughs> you walked that fine line. You walked that fine line. <laughs> and if, if, if that freak interception in the end zone doesn't happen, I might be in first place here. Not talking about a sixth place roster. I'll tell That's you that. true. That's true. <laughs> Wayne Galvin in there. Um, but you're right. Well, t- hey, Tony Meatball did what Tony Meatball's what I've been. He's my Luis Perez. I've been calling him for day one. That's exactly what Tony Meatball does. <laughs> Right. That is not a shocker to me that Tony Meatball has a uh, a, a pick like that. But um, and Marcel Aitman with the touchdown, who's also my con- to be considered list. So I put on the DFS who had the touchdown. Um, I thought I, I thought St. Louis was going to luck box their way into a win like they owe, like they do at the beginning of the season. They they're they're a team that picks up steam as they go along as well though. And uh, yeah, AJ McCarron's kids got to see him lose on the road at Simon in, front of the, in the Ford Field. And to me, like you, you never want to see your quarterback averaging just five yards of completion. That means yeah. everything was checked down. City. He was yeah. not able to to complete a lot of deep passes to really you know get that defense you know off edge essentially. Yeah. Um, and but, I will say, and I will say, I joined J Mark. This was my only loss. I did have the Battle Hawks, as I thought. And when, when, and when AJ missed him, missed that deep connection early on. I was, I felt good. I was like, oh, well, this, this, this should be there all day. You know what I mean? And then after that, Panthers like locked up, and they were, they, he, and he didn't even attempt anything downfield. It seemed like, the yeah, the rest of the game. And that's what's hilarious is we shit on EJ Perry, and I agree, we should. He yeah. only completed fifty percent of his passes. Now McCarron's almost completed, you know, close to sixty-five percent, but. Everything was checked down city. At least Perry was averaging 7.3 yards of completion. So like yeah. taking more shots down the field. Um mm-hmm. it's surprising. And that that's a stat I would have not bet on. Like it, even though I had Michigan, I thought Michigan could win that game outright. I did not <laughs> think he, I thought it'd be reversed. I thought EJ Perry's you know would be averaging four to five yards of completion and McCarron's would be the one stretching the field. Um one one thing I'll say for any of the listeners, watch the live bets on these because when it was fifteen to nine and St. Louis was getting the ball back, and they yeah. still had like what five minutes left in the game, I think. Um, St. Louis was plus five hundred on the money line. I know they didn't win, but plus five hundred completely worth that risk for me. Yeah, and there were twenty four points in the game. The over under was twenty six and a half at plus two twenty. Hmm. I mean, a lot of value there. I jumped on both of those. So watch those books because I feel like they, they don't pay super close attention to the UFL as much as they would like the NFL, you know, so yeah. opportunity yeah. to make some money there. Uh, 
Uh, that under hit for me. Uh, easy this, under. This one was. Uh, we, we all, we're all on this under. This was. Yeah. Easy. This was an easy under. This was that. Was this the highest total, or was it the DC? The DC was the highest total. I think DC. Yeah, but dude, I, I, I think they might like. We'll see what Birmingham becomes. I think this is the best defense in the league. For sure, but they don't have enough offense right now. I know they they're not a contender because their offense. But, but kicker, I mean, he kicked a fifty-two yarder as well, Bates. That, it wasn't yeah. just. High. I mean, this guy. I don't understand. Yeah. Um. All right, we're going to talk about Sunday's games, but before I do that, I want to tell you the UFL Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S. based and available in forty different states. P two P social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users of sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes. Plus, a ton of fun social features that give it a feel of a betting social network, so to speak. And Cut offers lower vig and fully customizable odds. You can create your own bets. Uh, and cut handles the payment side of things. So you never have to chase anyone down for dollars. Um, download the cut app today uh, or go to cut.com. That's K U T T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by underdog fantasy. Underdog fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Pick whether your favorite player will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big uh, I know right now we have, it's a Monday. So uh, we got the, uh, women's NCAA tournament going on. Caitlin Clark, CJ mm. likes the higher than nine and a half assist. Uh, J Mark, uh, you're in the state of Iowa. Uh, do you agree that higher would be the play there? Oh yeah. Take higher on everything she does. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's gonna, definitely going to run for governor at some point in her life of Iowa. Um, I like mixing that with uh, Milk Chamberlain, the Indiana State uh, Star Center, uh, who's playing tomorrow in the NIT uh, over, what was it, 16 and a half, or I'm sorry, higher than 16 and a half points per game or points in the game. Uh, you can win up to 100 times the amount of money you enter in a single night with Underdog Fantasy. And look, all you got to do is pick between two and five players to build a pick entry. With each player you add, your odds go up. So sign up today with the promo code TCESGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pickup special. Visit underdogfantasy.com. Find them in the app store. Don't forget to register with the promo code TCESGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pickup special. All right. We are back on the UFL gambling podcast. Shout out to the chat. Shout out to the 161 people watching along. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Um, overall, I mean, I really thought the games were pretty decent. Now I thought Saturday's games were better than Sundays. I don't know if you guys like just from a viewing standpoint, I thought they were, they had a little more bang to them, but, uh, one of the things, so we had the Brahmas take down the defenders, 27, 12. I was on the Brahmas, uh, this game, I thought the over would hit in this game. Uh, it did not, um, but the Brahmas got it done. And and really the thing that jumped out to me, I had to go back and, and really take a look. You know, this DC Defenders team is kind of like a brand new offense. There's not many players that were on the team from a year ago. And I am a huge skeptic of DC moving forward because I thought the offensive line was horrible. I thought... You know, this just does not look like, besides Jordan Tamu, the coaching and DJ Swearinger, there's not many guys that were on this roster from a year ago. It's not like Birmingham, mm. which makes me a huge skeptic because now, granted, unfortunate situation, if you really die into the, dive into the numbers, it, you know, from a yardage standpoint, I thought Greg Williams made great adjustments in the second half. They really shut down this offense in the second half. However, uh, it was a pretty even game. The score is a little bit mis misleading from a yardage standpoint, but San Antonio was the better team. Make no mistake. Uh, J Mark, your thoughts on this one? Yeah. I mean, uh, Chase Garbers shocked the hell out of me that he did so well. But part of that, I think is that, that AJ offense. I mean, we saw last year, his offense, they started fast the first three or four games. I don't know if that's going to remain consistent. I don't know if they can stay this good because if you watch a lot of their plays, they're they're very similar. If you cover the running back or that first read, which is usually the slot guy like John T. Kirkland, you can probably slow this offense down. So I think they they're going to have to mix it up to become a little bit uh, less predictable there. I you know I kept watching it and it's like oh didn't hand it off he's throwing to this guy and then he would it's just it's very predictable. And then uh, I mean Tamu, 
25 for 45, one interception, second worst quarterback rating. Um, on Some the of that was the O line, though. I, I know, it I know was. you like shit on, but the O line was like I thought last year, and I'd, I'd be curious. And I, I, I thought DC kind of had the best of O line last year. That did not look like the case to me. Yeah, watching this game, um, they missed Abram Smith. I mean, they, they, could, they couldn't oh, run the ball, man. Like they were just I mean, like, uh, you know, Harris, you know, they didn't really try as much either, but um, when Abram Smith, he would get 20 carries. He was a real bell cow. And with like, they just didn't, you know, Harris, 13 rushes for 44 yards, free rushes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, free Puka. How many, he does the kick return. He had one run rush for nine yards. Let's, I mean, how long are we going to sit on this uh, phenom for crying out loud? Let the lawn, let the lawnmower man loose. Hold on. <laughs> uh, mowing off his toes. Get the lawn. Let's let Puka loose for crying out loud. What are we doing, Barlow? Putting from the 50 on his first drive. Talk about kicking the coaching decisions, by the way. What, what was that? That was the fourth and five though, right? Or what was that? Fourth and one, my friend. Oh, oh yeah. He did it again then, I think, with the... F no, they might have got bailed out because of a penalty. With the um, new razor. Now, this, by the way, this game alone... Now, it wasn't much closer game than the score show, but the right team did win. Yes. But it did turn with that whole spit gate situation down there. Yeah. Um, what is that? That was insane. First of all... It's like the water <laughs> bottle all over again. I know. And, and the, the spit is such a crime. And it's such a... You know, it's got like fucking like... I mean, it's got like history to it. You know, it's got racial overtones where people are, you know, are strung up and thrown out of the league if you do it. That is like the least thing that's happening with these with these people going, you know, smashing on each other, and so you know, all kinds of fluids being exchanged. But oh god, he spit on me. That's it. Fifty yard penalty <laughs> on extra point. And while we're at it, let's review the let's review if there was a false start. Hey, Dino Blandino, can you review that? No, you can't. Well, uh, I thought we got rid of him when I saw on uh, when I saw on Saturday. I was like, oh, Mike Ferreira. Okay, we're good. We're good, yeah, Mike no. Pereira. Dino Grandino's oh. his whole center up there. This is a good time to remind any new fans here of the UFL. Dino Blandino was never a referee at any <laughs> levels. He was a former comic in New York who just fucking swindled his way to a TV job. And all of a sudden, he's the expert up there. He's got his whole team, and it's a Dean show we got to be a part of. And he's wrong. <laughs> well, what did he say last year again? We got to watch it at game speed. We got to watch it at game speed. I'm like, what are you talking about? Replace point is to not watch it at game speed. Yeah. You fucking asshole. Um, the TVs can't have an advantage over the human. So <laughs> how about the five minutes he spent reviewing the one false start? That was a false start. It's like, right. it's obvious after the it's first, like, okay, game, it's obvious. Why? <laughs> oh man. Uh, one thing that did jump out to me guys. It sucks that. Anthony McFarland's on this team that doesn't run the ball because I think he's the best running back in the league. Like you put him on Detroit and goddamn, they might win the whole thing. How do you only give him the ball nine times when he's averaging 5.2 yards a rush that their whole team only the rest of the team's average, by the way, brought him down. The The team only averaged for 3.3 uh, yards a rush. Um, well, I mean, he did have that reception for 30 yards, which was kind of a screen. See, you just got to get him the ball. He's the most dynamic player in the league, I feel like. Which is how he scored on that touchdown. Um, I, I like this stat. 28 yards receiving on that one catch. 34 yak yards. Just getting more, like Tech Mobile style. He went backwards just to hit people. <laughs> and then he scored in the end zone. I loved him when he was at Maryland. And and I, I think he's got potential to be like your bell cow back. But they run the air raid. I don't think it's a good fit. I don't think it's a good fit for him. I think you put him on, on one of the other teams and I mean, we'll see if Wade Phillips, who I, I never trust as a good head coach. I think he's a good defensive coordinator. Will, will he realize the talent that he has there and say, Hey, we got to start committing to the run more because this is a guy that started Tommy Matt or drafted Tommy Maddox to say, Hey, he's going to take over for John Elway. Right. No. This is a guy that started Rob Johnson over Doug Flutie in the playoffs, cost the Buffalo Bills a game. I don't I don't know that he's gonna have the wisdom to do this, but this guy's I, I mean, dude, you saw it on that screen, you saw it on a couple runs. Right. I was like, he's better than everybody on the field. Yeah, yeah, well, they wanted to platoon him with Love It, I guess, you know, from the Vegas, his Vegas Viper days. I don't know why Love It gets so much. <clears throat> 
love it. And it's, 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 uh, you know, McFarlane made my DFS squad. He still looked good. Um, it's just kind of, I think the way of the world here with, especially in, in, in these leagues, the, where they platoon to get everyone involved, you know, uh, a little league style. They don't want to, no one wants to be worked into the ground here. And, and it's very rare, very rare are people getting, uh, you know, that bell cow treatment. And if they were like, you're like your Abram Smith. And then even then towards right. the end of the season, they started weaning off of them. You saw the USFL do that with Victor though. And with Mark Thompson yeah, for sure. And, and you know what this reminds me of is in the, in the first season of the USFL's coming back, Cavante Turpin emerged at the, with the generals and Mike Riley would do things creatively. He would say, Oh, they're going to do a reverse. They're going to do, you know, jet sweeps, anything they can do to get Cause he jumped off screen. You just said, I remember, you know, me and my brother texting when we were watching the game. We we're like, I don't know who the fuck that is, but he's better than everybody on the field. <laughs> that is what the the same vibe I got from watching McFarland on a few plays. I was like, they need to give him the ball oh, every absolutely. fucking time. He was a Jay, beast. J Mark, your thoughts on uh, McFarland and uh, this game? Oh yeah, I mean, he definitely looked like the real deal. The little stutter step and everything on that mm -hmm. long run. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, who's this guy? Think he is. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I, to CJ's point, I don't understand why you give love at 10 carries and McFarland only nine. That makes zero sense to me because you can see just from their average love it with 1.3 McFarland with 5.2 who should be having 15 to 20 carries. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually a bit mind numbing. Um, I thought the uh, Greg Williams defensive adjustments uh, were very key. If it wasn't for that interception, you know, they, they basically put the kibosh on uh, the Brahma's offense in the second half. If they play again, I think that could be a, a uh, concerning, concerning uh, thing is like, it seems like he figured them out. It was just too late. Mm -hmm. um, you also had that trick play where the guy's down at the, in my opinion, like it seemed like he got tackled at the one yard line. And it seemed like he waited to tackle him. I don't know. He could have easily just jumped on his legs right to right to five. And I mean, I don't know. The bet detective sniffed something. And I was, yeah. you know, and I was on the Brahmas, but I didn't, you know, it, it was just. It well, and they had their problems uh, in short yardage situations too. So it would have made it very interesting. Yeah. When there was two seconds, the clock yeah. was about to run out too. It was two seconds. Yeah. yeah. More than interesting. It they the, and they won. didn't show it. My biggest thing is they didn't show us the side replay. And I'm like, every other play they're showing us the side replay. I'm pretty certain yeah. when I saw it in real time, I thought he was down at the one. Mm -hmm. But UFL week one debut doesn't look as good if the guy gets down at the two no. or the one. That looks <laughs> much better as a touchdown. Out. Absolutely. Yeah. The play of the weekend. They already had the uh, thick six graphic ready to come up. You know what I mean? Like they were, <laughs> they were going to stop now. I think, I, th I, think, I think you're onto something here. Um, and then the finale, we all locked this one up. Did I did hit my lock and my dog. Mm -hmm. This one. Um, okay, I know I said a bunch of good things about the USFL. However, um, I'm very concerned about both these teams, but specifically Houston. <laughs> Houston's the I power ranked them in the preseason as my eighth ranked team. All right. They they are still gonna be the eighth ranked team because watching them, now the, the defense might have a, a few playmakers, but this offense can't block for shit. Uh Guantanamo Bay. Uh, I almost felt sorry. He was holding on to the ball a little too long, also, but they couldn't run the ball. I know Mark Thompson didn't play, Pledger played, but still. I don't know that they're going to have success running the ball. I kind of like a couple of the guys on their defense side of the ball. Ruben Foster, obviously was big. Uh, Toby Johnson, also a uh, former general that, that played well. Uh, I feel like the score is deceiving in this game too. Cause I feel like Memphis owned this game. Mm -hmm. I mean, Houston only had 174 yards of offense Memphis. I'm concerned though, for a team that's this talented, their run blocking was Awful 1.8 yards of rush. The reason why I didn't cash anything on my DFS lineup was because Darius Victor didn't do diddly poo to quote George, uh, Jim Mora there. Um, dude, I mean, if it wasn't for Carnell Lake's defense, I was surprised that Memphis struggled this much. Vinny Papali with a great touchdown in this uh, game, but I tell you, he did do something. Vinny Papali Jr. from Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, top of the toe. <laughs> Case Cook is though. I mean, to 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 go back to our McCarrens. Cook is fine. He's still only five yards of completion, though, man. Know, he but... threw the ball forty times. Who the fuck is this team? I I was surprised they threw the ball that much, but at the same time, it was, uh, an, ugly, it was an ugly game. With Darius Victor and Titus Swin, 
14 rushes, three yards. <laughs> Cook is and and Davis, the the wide out, got all their rushing yards for them. They only had 34 yards rushing. I am very fucking concerned. I still think they're uh, you know, if they can fix that, they could be very good. But that's a red Agreed. flag right now for me. And I'm surprised they threw the ball that much. J Mark, your thoughts on this game? Yeah. Um I didn't think Cookus looked that great last year. I, I said I didn't think he looked as good as he did year one. But he was and coming off an injury, remember? He was he coming was. off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't think he looked that great in this game. I agree. The the running, especially when you have Jerry's Victor, I know he's getting up in age as far as running backs go, but this dude's a bowling ball. And when he carries the ball 10 times for three yards, mm. he can fall farther than that normally. So that's how bad your run blocking is. Um but I agree. If they can, if they can clean that up some, I'm really curious. Between week one and week two, we saw a lot of transactions last year. A lot of guys cut. A lot of the reserve guys picked back up. I'm curious to see if we see that again this year. And for Memphis, if I'm Memphis, you're looking at the guys that you had in camp on the O line and say somebody can block better than this, right? Yeah. I mean, you got it. To me, you know, I power ranked them at number two in the preseason. Yeah. No. I don't know that I can have him number two until I see that figured out. Um, but I mean, it is just one game and maybe, and, and you know what it could be too, is Houston might just be that good on the defensive side of the ball. Like there were plays where Houston's defense was looking really fucking good. Uh, yeah. It was either that or Memphis's offense was that bad. Um, obviously Ruben Foster was an animal in that game. Uh but this was, we never, I mean, I thought for a second, I was like, man, if they backdoor this bullshit, because Memphis was dominated this game. They dominated this game. Um, but yeah, CJ, your thoughts on this one? They did. And I, I, I relearned real quick. Um, not this game, but uh, maybe it was just the, the defender game. Yeah. Defender Brown's game. How, how open that backdoor is in this league. <laughs> like I forgot about it. Yeah. The- the extra points, like, uh, oh yeah, no, you're up 15 means absolutely nothing. That's just a, that's just a standard drive down the field. So the back door was definitely open, but um, you know, listen, Memphis was all of our locks. It felt like it was in control the entire game. I mean, they they dominated the time of possession. It, it almost seemed like they weren't just a, they weren't even afraid of Houston doing anything. So I don't know if they didn't open it up, but either way, it was kind of just a it's a dull game way to end this end this weekend out. Um. The right team won, but yeah, also there's uh you know there's some red flags going up for this Memphis team, that's for sure. I'm not I'm not too overall confident with them. I mean those are ugly numbers. You know, like you're saying like like J Mark was saying about Victor, ten rushes for three yards. I mean, that should never happen. Um, I know he did have five catches and they targeted him that way and he had like 30, 40 yards that way. They utilized him there, but like he he sh- he should not have less than fifty yards ever rushing the ball. I thought they'd be a little more balanced. Yeah. I thought they'd be, especially with they have three good running backs in my opinion. I thought they'd be more balanced. They got the win. They survive. Um, let's uh, we're gonna do our power rankings and uh, and get out of here. But uh, I was curious. So next week on Saturday we got Brahmas at the Showboats, uh, followed by Renegades at the Battle Hawks. Um, then you have the Stallions at. Ford field taking on the Panthers and then the roughnecks at the defenders. Um, which game is the game you want to see most out of those four? Mm. Is it renegades battle Hawks? Because one of those teams is going to be zero and two. I don't, I don't think I was looking at the schedule. I don't think renegades get a win until week four or five when they play Houston. Um, I, and I don't mean to jump CJ here, jump ahead of him, but for me, it's Stallions Panthers. Mm-hmm. You have that that offense against that defense. I, I'm excited to see how that pans out and to see if the Panthers can get just a little bit more going on offense to complement that strong defense. Well, that's the thing. They had their quarterback retire, right? Their starting quarterback retired. Yeah. If if I'm if I'm them, if I'm Mike Nolan or whoever their GM is, I don't know if the, if it's player coached or if it's coach, you know, GM as, as much as it used to be, but you can find quarterbacks. What league or what? I mean, first off, we know Sloter's out there, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm saying like they're, th- th- we've seen this. I feel like, was it DeAndre Johnson's out there, right? So it's like you, you can just go get somebody 
and I think he's going to be better than EJ Perry. You can still have EJ Perry on that roster for depth, but just you're you're one player away from being like I like their receiving core, man. I think their receiving core is a lot better than it was a year ago. Yeah. Um, as far as the game I'm looking at there, I think you call it right up the top there, Colby, the Arlington St. Louis game. It's in the, it's in the dome Saturday night. This is what the league wants to show off. They want to show off these fans. Um, I think St. Louis has a big bounce back game and I want to see if they can bounce back or if there's real trouble with, uh, with this team. Cause I had them ranked, uh, I had them ranked second, I believe power ranked before the season. And I was not happy obviously with that. Um, Opening effort, I think they bounce back. I mean, obviously they're a much better team at home. That Tony Meatballs and that that crazy crowd, AJ and the family. Um, so that's gonna be an exciting game just to see that crowd reaction. Because like I said, like like we said, it was a bad scheduling. There's some of these fields like the opening weekend to have like like that. You know, it's at Ford Field where it looks like there's 500 people there, and you could do the head count in about 10 seconds. You know, like it just it's just not a good look. Um, but yeah, that, you know, that being said, so that'll be a lit situation that I'm looking forward to. It's a Saturday night game. That'll be great. Yeah. Speaking right. of that, real yeah, quick. I was, I was about to bring that up. Let's go. Fire fire. What were you gonna bring up? Attendance? Yeah, go. Oh, oh yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> Fourteen thousand one hundred and fifty-three at Arlington, thirteen thousand one hundred and sixty-four at San Antonio, nine thousand four hundred and forty four at Michigan, and nine thousand one hundred and fifty seven at Houston. All right. Because they didn't have the gamblers. I yeah. <laughs> uh, didn't have the gamblers. It was also Easter. That's going to be challenging. Yeah. yeah sure. Sunday morning. I, I actually think that's the one that's affected the most. Yeah. I don't know that Houston's numbers would be that bad if that was on Saturday, you know? Um, that's true. Yeah. Um, interesting though. Um, folks, we're going to get to our power rankings, but before we do that, I want to tell you that the UFL gambling podcast is brought to you by, uh, well, I think did I already do Hall of Fame bets? Hall of Fame bets win bigger by betting smarter this NBA season with Hall of Fame bets, a sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NBA and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame bets to craft more intelligent, data driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use that promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today, people. With Hall of Fame bets. <laughs> All right. Um, Can I, I mean, jump in before we do the power rankings, real quick? Just for sure. quick, just quick little point I want to make. Uh, we had a great weekend. Everyone hit all the bombs. Uh, Dundee went, ran the table, except for a couple of the totals, but uh, for all hit all four sides. We all hit most of our sides and the money lines. We hit our locks. We hit our dogs. We hit our totals. I just wanted to say, I mean, this is the the real UFL show, and and for for these guys on the mothership. You're Sean oh, yeah. making money green. You're sports, right. sports gambling yeah. podcast nonsense. Yeah, nonsense. And they bring in, they come in and they poach our information. They bring, they get Dundee, they get the headshot. They bring him over there. They suck out all the information. And then they throw their picks out willy nilly and they tell, oh, look at us, nine and oh, you know, coming in. And then they come into our, no, no, we're, we're, we're buried in the basement in the mail room. And they come down there, hey, when can we get lines for week two? You know, like the CEO <laughs> wants another idea, pronto. Like, all right, you know, we're like, yes, sir, yes, sir, the slave master. Here are the new lines. Like, we make the lines, you know, I'm just saying this is where they get the information from. And that's what I want to know that there's a real UFL show comes on there. <laughs> oh, and I, 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 and I do believe, I think I had some arguments last year. There's a Sean green hacker in the chat room already. Look at that. I do believe, he's I got, do believe he's got, he's got bots protect looking out for him everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make this point. Now I know it's only one week. But yeah. I'm saying I tried to, to say like no man one style of football is way better than the other the style and we'll see I, do you think anyone can the stallions run the table CJ <laughs> uh, I mean they're definitely the cream of the crop but can they yes will they know just like we said you know the, the loss has come I, very similar last year with DC we knew that lot when they lost to the, they lost to the worst team in the league in Orlando. A game that we have, we actually were on, um, so that's just the way it goes. But yeah, I mean, can they? Of course, are they better than everyone? Yes. Will they run the table? No, because I do think this league's competitive enough where uh, it'll be tough week in week out to do it. It'll get, be called on the road. And uh, shout out to Sean Green, of course. Oh no, just- man, that. Nine zero is nine zero, but yeah, oh, that, 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 that over game, 
Get, don't get me started. What three three turnovers inside the thirty yard line, a a missed field goal by Blewett. I was on the right side. That is a bad bad beat there. Now I even say San Antonio was a bad beat, man. At halftime, you were looking great. Greg yeah. Williams over there, fucking ace, getting getting it done. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, power rankings. Let's should we go worse f- to first or first no, to worst? I do like I, I like I like Sean coming in here just to get some blood in the show, get some blood. Like, <laughs> like yeah, we get totally fired up, and that'll that'll crazy attention. He doesn't he hasn't he doesn't realize how many people we've been yelling at all day with the back. Oh. Of the- I don't think you guys realize how many people I've argued with on Twitter over the past year <laughs> over. They're like, these teams are not far off. And I'm like, shut the fuck up, man. I'm like, I don't know what you watch. I don't know how you watch a football game, but there are telltale signs of right. just of why this team is so good. And when you watch like certain XFL teams, you're like, oh, they're kind of playing pussy ball here, but the, it's working. They're winning. But when you put the play a really good team, which there's none in that league, uh, you're going to, you're going to get fucked up. Um, anyway, uh, All right. eighth. I, it pains me to say this because I just propped up the USFL, but the, the Houston, I love how they have an XFL name though. So we can blame it on the XFL. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you have Houston, not eighth. The defense looks all right, but the offense, whoo, I got to put them at eighth. Yeah. Um, I mean, sadly, there's an argument for DC the way they uh, played up, but um, just with the result wise, but no, I, I, I go Houston eighth. They were, they were just terrible. Same. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the probably the one and eight. I think we're all going to have, you know, we have figured out. Yeah. At seven to me is St. Louis. Mm. I mean, reasonable. I don't think they're. I, I don't have any faith. In yeah, that. I, I I can't go that far. But <laughs> go ahead. I, I'm willing to listen. I love okay. it. Okay. Well, let 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 let's listen. Let, let, yeah. Because I saw Greg Williams. <laughs> yeah. Shut shut down that offense in the second half. That was encouraging to me. Right. Yeah. Uh, now I still have a lot of concerns about DC on the offensive side of the ball. But at least I can count on Barlow and Williams to make adjustments. We saw it. I can't count on that from 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 Tony Meatball, right? Uh, their offense and their home crowd. Maybe that. Maybe there's something there. But I'm not impressed. I think they're a pussy team, personally. Uh, I'll put them at seventh. Yeah, I was kidding about uh, DC. Although I have DC around, around mid pack. Uh, I no, I got to put Arlington seventh. I mean, come on. Um, they uh like 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 you said like Jay Mark said as much as I'd like to troll with Perez once he gets pressure on him I mean they didn't know they had a tough quality opponent there um but they're up early and then that they, they had nothing for a team that was up early they had nothing and it seemed like that should have been more of a blowout than a, what what it was for a team that jumped out to an early lead I I thought Arlington actually had more red flags than anyone as far as pu- who put up a, a reasonable effort that no one's really talking about kind of under the radar yeah. Uh, so we'll see with Arlington St. Louis this week, buddy. But, uh, J Mark, who's your seventh ranked team? I'll do it. I'll put DC down there. Uh, mm. they, they, they didn't have an offense without Abram Smith. Tamu couldn't overcome, uh, the pressure and the mistakes. The offensive line sucks. I know the defense, uh, defensive coach is good. I still have questions about their defensive talent. So yeah, I got them at seven there. All right. And, I, n- okay. and- at number six, um, I I think this is where this is where you get. I got DC right now at number six. Mm-hmm. I still don't have him there just because of respect from Reggie Barlow. I'm, I'm, I do I'm, think I'm, that, I'm, that, yeah. that 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 is a huge element there. Like I think they could quickly jump to three because I do think they're probably dude. That guy c- coached in the MIAC and D two and shit. Like you yeah. have to make adjustments nonstop at that. So I do think yeah. If there's a team that I could be off on the most, I think it's DC. Yeah, but I think that that, that, that their offensive line looked really bad, and they, but we knew there was going to be a big transition. They lost all the receivers. They lost Abram Smith. You know, they have enough in the bank. At least Barlow does. At least for me, where I'll give him time to you know figure things out. Where I'm not going to say like they have no hope. Like for some teams, I don't look like I like I my sixth team is a team that won. I, I'm putting. Uh, 
I'm putting Memphis down there. Why? Well, I, I was less impressed with them, <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a winner than I am then with uh, with either Arlington or DC. To be honest, well, so the only reason why I have them ranked above is because they actually did get the win. But I, I thought Memphis's defense looked pretty nasty, though. Yeah, sure they did. They're playing fucking Houston, but still, I mean, you can't take that away from them. <laughs> they still look. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, I could take it away from them, and I'll make. <laughs> and he will. <laughs> yeah. So, so at you're six, right, you're right. Their defense did look good, but I mean, still, there's there's a slap on all the paint you want. The house still needs renovations over there for sure. So, so he's got Memphis at six. Yep. J. Mark, who you got at six? Renegades. Um, mm. I guess you guys could just say I'm hating on the quarterbacks I don't like in Tamu and Perez by sticking them at the bottom, but it, he's just Perez is a guy that if you can figure out how to pressure him, I don't think he can win games. Uh, but they're not bottom of the pack. Their defense is still pretty solid, and the run game was okay. I think the run game can improve. Yeah, uh, that's my number five team is Arlington. I still think this roster is better than a lot of other rosters, including a couple ahead of them. Yeah. Um, and they played Birmingham. I think we might be, we might be uh, overreacting Birmingham. I think it's just way better than everyone in the league. Mm -hmm. um, but based on one, you know, sample size, one week sample size here, I think for me at fifth, I, I still trust that roster though. I still trust that roster. And I think it's better than, like I trust the physicality better than I do say St. Louis, St. Louis, where I, I worry now. I, the only thing is St. Louis has that home crowd, but I just think they're a little bit better of a football team than St. Louis. Um, take it for what it is one weekend. Uh, who you got CJ at fifth? We're at fifth. Um, I believe I do have uh, St. Louis at this point. I've already had, I've already ranked Arlington. I've already ranked Houston. I've already ranked them and I've already ranked Memphis. So um, yeah, give me St. Louis at five. Another team that uh, I still ha give them. Uh, they have enough in the bank as well, where they can write the ship. Once they get home, they're a completely different team. Um, you know, it was, it was a, a tough fought, ugly battle versus Michigan. And uh, which team I still think is probably better on. I, mean, I think if Michigan plays at St. Louis, it's a different result. But uh, for now, it is what it is. I'll put St. Louis to five. There we go. Uh, J. Mark, what are you doing? Yeah, I got the Battle Hawks at five as well. Um, I, I don't think we're going to really know who this team is until week three, because I think next week they go home and they're going to look really good. They're going to win the game pretty easily. And then week three, they go on the road again against the Brahmas. I think that's when we're really going to say, like, was week one a fluke? Can they only win at home? You know, what? who is this team? But yeah. so for now, I got them at five. All right. At number four for me, um, I have the Memphis Showboats. Not super impressed, but you got the win. I was impressed with the defensive side of the ball. The, the offensive side of the ball, you got to figure some things out. Mm -hmm. Based on your talent on the offensive side of the ball, I thought they underachieved. Um, but I still say they won. They never trailed in that game. It was a pretty dominating performance, despite them almost blowing the cover. Um, they're at number four for me. CJ, where are you going? Uh, I haven't ranked my DC defenders yet, so I want to put them at four. Just like I said, uh, I just think they're having a little transition point, the transition point, but uh, I'm. I'll, I'll give I'll give them a mulligan for this game, and I think like like if it wasn't that spit gate, I think this is a lot closer game than it than it than it uh, appeared to be. So I'm, I'm, oh, I've, and when you throw in the uh, the kick, yeah, the kick and in the you know or the uh, the punch the punch the pass shit, you know what I mean? Punt pass, the spinning, the respinning, the false starting, the Dino Blandino. Just get rid of all that nonsense. <laughs> Let DC and Jordan. Let, I mean, Jordan was the MVP last year for crying out loud. You're talking about. I know Jay Mark. That's who he is. You know the fucking picks, but he also has a lot of good in him too that he did all year long last year as he wrote to, as he led them to a nine one team. <laughs> a little bit. I let him bounce back as he's learned he's new receiver. So DC defenders, beer snake four. Let's go. Mm, mm. Who you got at four, Jay Mark? So I struggled on who to put at three and four here because they were kind of tied. Um, I just couldn't put a, a team that's led by EJ Perry over the Cook <laughs> and Gary Spector team. So I got the Panthers here. I realize they have an excellent defense. Um, 
but I thought the showboats looked good on defense too. And I think Cookus and Victor on offense can be better than what Michigan can get out of their players. So, so yeah, I got the, uh, the Panthers here. Uh, I like that. I mean, it'll be, uh, that, that was the hardest team to do for me was, yeah. and you'll see what I did with them, but I thought that was the hardest team to, to, to figure out. Um, for me, uh, at number three, I, I, I went, uh, I went San Antonio mainly because do I think this team could end up number two easily if they give the ball to Anthony McFarland more? Yeah. If they find creative ways to get him the ball, but I just can't trust it yet. I do think that score is a little misleading, and I thought they got blanked in the second half. So I think there was a little bit of concern there, and maybe that's just Greg Williams. But when you play some of the other teams that I think do have good defenses, now obviously Houston doesn't have a good offense, but Detroit. Could get, could give them some or Michigan could give them some some issues. Um, so I put them at three. Mm. CJ, uh, I don't think it's as close. I think I got Michigan at three. I think that I think there's a big gap between Michigan and San Antonio. To be honest, San Antonio impressed me a lot um, in the first half. In the first half, their talent jumped off the screen though, and like you said, and like you said, that is like a Greg Williams in the second half. That's another reason why I have DC ranked so high. Um, I like San Antonio. They were 12 to one before that game. And our, our own friend of the program, stormy Bear, stormy gave them out as a, for their futures. They were the, uh, the dog to win it all before the game. You won't get that number again. That's good. CLV already, um, but they look good. They look real good. So I got it. Uh, I'm talking about Michigan at three Michigan and I can see Michigan sliding down they are they'll, they'll look with that kind of defense. They'll be in every game, but they, they can, they're going to have ugly games all year. So this mission's going to be sliding up and down all year. You know I mean? The, the ceiling on Michigan isn't as high as San Antonio's in my mind. Hear me out for a second on that. All right. Lewerke is a true lawn chair. <laughs> he was just signed like a week ago. Yeah. If I trust him to be a better throwing quarterback than EJ Perry. And to me, yeah one of the, the things that I think he can do is not make turnovers. Like he, he could be like chase Garbers to me of like, Hey, your job is just to, to manage the game. Don't make turnovers. And then you blend that with a decent run game and a good defense. Sign me yeah. up for it. Uh, anyway, shout out to you by the way, as well for calling out chase Garbers, having a good game. Cause I wasn't, I was not ready to believe it. His first game starting in a, in a while. And you're like, no, he's going to, you were, you were on, you were on that. I watched you him. Know. I knew, you know, I'm a college guy, buddy. So I, 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 I knew about him in college. Yeah, I knew. Yeah. I knew a full scouting report on Chase, and uh, he was good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, J. Mark, um, who's your third ranked team? Third, I got the Showboats. Um, I, I just think if they can get Cookus looking a little bit better and and just get a run game, I mean, that's really what they need to get Darius Victor going. That they could be one of the better teams in this league. I, if they were to able to get the run game going, they could be the biggest threat to Birmingham to me. Yeah. But after what I watched, <laughs> I I don't know that I can uh, power rank them there. Just off of I thought they're I I if, out of the whole league to me the worst offensive line in uh, out of all eight teams. It was Memphis to me. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it's just one week. Maybe you know. Maybe they pick up some guys like you said. Uh, at number two, I have Michigan. I think they have the best defense in the league. I think that jumped out to me week one that their defense is, is something to fear. And then you add that kicker to the mix and the fact there's so many domes, he's going to be playing. He's going to be kicking. They don't need, all they need is Lewerke. Just someone did not turn the ball over. <laughs> you can get three points, every possession with that. With, and shout out to the U, UFL kickoff. Once again, I, I was enjoying almost every return. Um, but yeah, Michigan's the number two team to me. Their defense, their run game, I think is is decent. Even EJ Perry's mobility can be a factor. They should utilize it more. Stop trying to make it like the fucking NFL, Mike Nolan. Take his skill set and maximize his skill set. Said they got him dropping back like he's fucking Broadway Joe. Um, How did they not know he was going to run into any big play they needed? It was quarterback draw. Like anytime. That's what I'm saying. Good. Like, but they should they right. should do more creative shit, QB powers. You know what mm. I mean? Option read stuff. They should do more that utilize, know who the fuck he is. You know what I mean? He's not the type of guy to throw 40, 40 times a game or whatever. I know he didn't throw 40 times a game, but that's not, right. he's just not a drop back quarterback. Um, QB powers. 
Yeah. Give me love powers, it. man. Back. I love it. Get it go. <laughs> hey, Cam Newton. They did that shit all the time with Cam yeah, Newton. Really? Absolutely. You know? Um, what are you doing here? Uh number two. Uh, I pretty much already tipped it off. I got the Brahmas as my two, and we all Birmingham number one. Um, like I said, they their talent jumped off the court. You're right, second half not as good, but I think that was more Greg Williams. So I like San Antonio. Uh J Mark. I got them as at two as well. Uh, honestly, I don't expect them to stay there. Uh, just because we saw this last year with AJ Smith, his offense looked great. He was making long John silvers look good. Right. <laughs> um, and, and chase Garbers did look really good. I just don't know if it's going to be continued success, but, uh, for now they look the part and we'll see if they can stay there. So I got them at two for now. If they utilize McFarland, they could be a real threat to the, to, to, yeah. to Birmingham too. I mean, he looked like the best player in the league. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Skill, skill player, at least. But uh, do I count on Wade? Do, do we have faith in Wade Phillips to uh, to take advantage of his talents? I don't know. Uh, one is Birmingham. We all have Birmingham. There's a chance that uh, I I I think you could put Birmingham against the Washington Redskins. They could win. Um, let's go. Um, <laughs> what's how big is that gap between one and two? It's big <laughs> for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can get one of J Mark's RVs in that gap. Park <laughs> parallel, park that, no problem. But you know what it is, man. As I was going through, I think they have more continuity than almost any team. Mm. I think that's true. I would like they like. I think four out of the five offensive linemen were with them last year. Uh, Sternberger was with them last year. Both two two of their backs, Marable and uh, Person Junior. Jamar Smith still on that roster to help the other quarterbacks. Mm. Um. The secondary, I feel like what uh, Tillery and Burns were, were have been on that team for a while. Uh, Scooby Wright and, and the, the other linebacker uh, Elijah Sullivan. Um, that yeah. they, they just have guys that have been there. I think that to, to their defensive tackle too. His name's Tillman. I think he he's been uh, he's been there a couple of years. So mm. uh, I think that might be some of it. But also, I think the coaching aspect. Um, yeah. Anyway, we'll be back Thursday. We think. Yep. Whenever we'll be back when we get lines. Um, whenever we, whenever we whip them up in the dungeon slave mail room for the, for the mothership. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks get on over to YouTube. Uh, well first get on over to Twitter and give us a follow at UFL gambling pod. And, uh, I believe that's the same on YouTube. Correct. J Mark. That's correct. YouTube. YouTube.com slash at UFL gambling pod. Yeah, so I fucked that up in the beginning. My apologies. Uh, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and shout out to uh, Simon who says, "Good show, guys. Come back when you get lines. We will." Yeah. Uh, yeah. Until next time, folks. This is the UFL Gambling Podcast. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here. Know what to get